Today we're going to be talking about some controversial subjects, I guess. <laughs> Hey peas, I'm Taylor, you're watching Pets in a Pod, and I don't know, I just kind of wanted to like sit down and talk today um, and update on some things and then also just give some controversial opinions. My channel is primarily focused on education, that's like 90% of what I try to do. I think giving a controversial opinion is educational in itself because it makes people think, it sparks discussion, and that's what I really want to emphasize too before I start talking, is that this is purely discussion. I am not one who likes to like bash and argue other people um, when people come to me for questions or if I disagree. I, I merely just want to express my point of view and what I have experienced and what I read up on. And so whatever I say in this video to today does not necessarily mean I'm stuck in my ways and that's going to be the end all be all. You know, I, I may change my mind in the future, but today in time this is how I feel about certain subjects that can sometimes spark people into arguments. My first one that kind of sparked this idea, I was just thinking about it, you know, just going about my day and thinking about these things, is um, shipping uh, pets so versus buying in the pet store. And this one's been talked about, and this one I don't think really is an argument, it's more so a dose of reality. And I think the problem people have with shipping pets is when you go to a pet store, you see it there and you take it home and you think, you know, well, when I drive it home, it's, you know, it's in my car, it's nice and climate controlled, I can have like music off, you know, you can basically make the best environment for your pet when you take it home. But I think people fail to realize is that pets have to get shipped to the store um, in order for you to get that pet. And a lot of the times when pets get shipped to stores, it's actually not as safe as when pets get shipped to your door. So I'm gonna specifically talk about reptiles on this one because that's where I have the experience and that's where most of shipping tends to come from. But when a reptile gets shipped to a pet store, specifically a big box pet store, they're shipped in batches. So sometimes they can be con in containers together. They can sometimes have longer shipping times um, as they travel across the US or continents for whatever reason. and Actually, that shipping is much more stressful than when you ship to your individual house because if you buy from a reputable breeder, when they ship to you, it's they will box single animals, unless they're okay being together, but they will box single animals, which means they don't have the stress of being like cohabbed while traveling. Uh, you also don't have like aggressive issues when they're cohabbed in small containers because they are shipped in smaller containers. They're also, in my opinion, more secure because sellers will take care to make sure that animal arrives to you alive and safe because a good breeder, that's their own reputation and a good breeder cares for their animals. They don't want them to die en route to you. So even just considering just shipping alone, when animals get shipped to a big box store versus when an animal gets shipped to you, the shipping to you is actually much safer. And then I get the appeal of buying in a pet store because when you get there, you see it, obviously it made it there alive. Like obviously it's okay now, it made it there. Regardless of where it came from or the ethics of the breeding and stuff like that, but it, I can see the appeal of wanting to buy in a pet store because it's right there in front of you. You know what it looks like, you know how it's acting. You can, sometimes you can hold them in pet stores. I, I just, I still am a proponent for I'd rather ship an animal to me unless, unless I'm getting it from an expo. So much more so than the people just need the reality check that the pets you see in the stores had to be shipped to. And if you have to choose between the two shipping evils, having to buy something from a reputable breeder and get it to your house is much more effective, much more safer. And since you are breed picking the breeder, you know, you're picking a breeder that you like, that you feel comfortable with, at a cost you're willing to pay, um, there's just so much more to control when you buy from a breeder than if you go to a pet store because you don't know which animals will arrive, what condition they'll be in. In my opinion, I'd rather have a reptile shipped to my home and all, almost all of mine have been. Only two did I buy in person. Next controversial opinion is loose substrate. I'm just gonna keep this one short and sweet because obviously you see my opinion here. I think loose substrate is fine. Um, as a blanket statement, I think all animals can be kept on loose substrate unless, again, they're like special needs or the that particular species just absolutely cannot be kept on loose substrate. But in the wild, no one is outside like <laughs> laying down repti carpet for animals to live on. 
Um, loose substrate is everywhere and that's what the animals naturally live on. And there is an argument because when you keep animals in captivity, the idea is that we're going to keep them at a higher standard than they would have to deal with in nature, aka they don't have predators, they don't have to go without food, they'll always have perfect temperature, that kind of stuff. But also I think we have a responsibility to mimic nature in that they are instinctually born to um, live and have an interest in things in the natural world. They have, many reptiles have instincts to dig and to burrow and to lay eggs in soil, to um, shed using rocks and natural elements and stuff like that. So I'm a huge advocate for things like that, like safe nature is what I like to think of it as. I want to replicate nature as much as I can, but it's going to be safe nature. So foods that are safe, like I said, no predators, you know, no poisonous things to worry about, um, no possibilities of injury. And I know there's a risk of impaction with soil and that's what people are concerned about, but just to keep things short and sweet without going into the research of it, your animals should not be eating the soil if you are providing the right diet for it and you are providing the right substrate. Using calci sand, of course your reptile is going to eat it, so that's what I mean. You have to really find and research the right soil for your animal, and all my reptiles have different soil mixes. Um, also just finding the right soil, and your animal shouldn't eat it. I have multiple reptiles, and none of them eat any of their soil, so um, it's just about, like I said, finding the right mixture and then also the right diet so they're not tempted to eat the soil for the missing nutrients and minerals that they're not getting in their diet. I also think it lets you guys know who I am and where I stand as a pet owner and that ultimately we're all just trying to do the best for our pets and that I am in no way trying to like harm or hurt my pets. I do the best I can, I do the most reading I can, but these are my opinions today and where they kind of are today. If you guys have any other stuff you guys want me to talk about, maybe non-controversial stuff, if you guys have any other video ideas, you're always free to comment them down below um, and subscribe to the channel. I post weekly every single Friday and let's see where this goes. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.